There are a few 128 gigabyte machines out there that recently came out that are available now for AI purposes, but there's one that's a little bit different and today I'm at Micro Center to pick one up. Let's go. So of course I'm talking about the DGX Spark. Micro Center now has them. I kind of wish Nvidia sent me one, but uh, they didn't. Hey Alex. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Hello Daniel, everyone. he's been helping me out a lot at Micro Center here and he has been doing a little bit of AI at home too. Uh, what are you running over there? I still just toy around with stable diffusion. Nice, but uh, what, what but hardware? 9950i3D with a 5090, 192 gigs of RAM. He usually helps me out building computers, but today we're not building anything. Today we're just buying, which is a ready-made little machine. Ah, here it is. Been waiting for this thing for how many months now? Like, I, think I don't know, started. probably 10 months? We've been talking about this for a while now. Yeah, CES is when it was first shown, but now it's October. So here we are, October 15th, launch day. Let's open it up. Do you want to open it up here or do you want to use the uh, upcoming AI table? Ooh, the AI table, let's check that out. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole idea behind the AI table that Microsoft is going to be doing is we want to have this on display so people can toy around with it. And we also want to give them stuff to compare it against. So we're going to have a workstation with a Threadripper and uh, a 5090 in it. And then we're also going to have a Mac Studio on the right of it. And then in the middle, this is where we intend to have the DJX Spark. So I'm going to be the one to set up your DJX Spark? Oh, no. Wait, this is my DJX This Spark. is your DJX Spark. Yeah. So, so Micro Center is getting into AI big time these days. They're starting to carry Sparks, but they've been carrying NVIDIA all along for a while now. Yeah, we carry a Pro 6000s as well, which is like a really high-end card if you're going down the route of not being a gamer. We're also the exclusive like retailer, as far as brick and mortar goes, for the DJX Spark. So if you're lucky enough to have a Micro Center are near you, then you can go and grab one. Those people that live in Phoenix, hold on. There's a store opening up very soon. I believe it's next month. So you're gonna get a chance to do that too. And everybody else, you're gonna have to drive a little bit further. Yeah, for now, for now. For now. I wanna really open it up, but I also want you to have the honor because you've been really helping me out here quite a lot. So why don't you do the honor for us? All right, I mean, if you guys are okay with it, I get a lot of you guys coming in here and uh, the first thing you say is, hey, I'm like, what? What's up? And they're like, oh, you got really nice hair. I'm like, oh, thanks. So yeah, I guess. Do it up. God, Here we go. I love this sort of like approach to like packaging nowadays where you just like tear things. I know, makes it easy. It's like, it reminds me of when I was like a little kid and you'd get those like action figures that had like the little like wrap thing around like the plastic and stuff and you'd have to like spend a bunch of time untangling it. Now it's just, you rip two things and it's there. And it's done. Oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> So this is cool because this has like foam texture on it, but it's not foam, it's it's metal. It's actually a little bit smaller than I thought it was gonna be. Don't leave that comment. Don't leave that comment. I know you're thinking about it. Hey, I'm not thinking of anything except uh, <laughs> the DJX Spark, you know? What do we got here? We've got four USB-C connections. The power button is here. HDMI port, 10 gig ethernet port. And what are these two? Well, these two are QSFP56 connections, or as Nvidia likes to call it, Connect X7. These allow you to link up two or more, well, two if you're going directly to another one of these Sparks, but if you use a switch with these kinds of connections, then you can link up a bunch of these. What do you think of the design? I love it. I'm personally more of like a silver guy, but this is like an NVIDIA like color, you this know? This is unique. This is like a Super founder's card unique. color. color. And there's, uh, there's air intake right here on the front. I didn't even know about that from all the media that I've seen so far. I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos, but there's air intake down here too. Or maybe that's the exhaust, but there should be exhaust back here and it just takes the air through this grill out the back and check this out. Magnetic cover so you can get inside. There's Wi-Fi antennas there. Magnetic covers are honestly I love such magnetic a blessing. covers. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see what's in the box here. It's uh, got a little power cable. It's got a brick too. Let's say you wanted to keep it like this. You've got the rubber bottom, but let's say you wanted to keep it like this. You don't have rubber feet and they don't come with rubber feet here like some docks do. So you're gonna scratch up your table. So keep it like this. Or, I think I saw Level 1 Techs have a little 3D printed solution where they can stand it up like that. It's got HDMI out, so if you want to plug it into your TV for some reason and have fun there, by all means. What are you going to do? Just watch YouTube videos? 
Yes. Now this thing is not cheap, right? But it can do a few things that no other machines can do in this size. That's pretty much it. There's yeah. nothing else to talk about. No, the Go next, home. Next what, step why is are you just still have here? Fun. That's it. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna plug this in and we're gonna test it out too. Are you gonna get one? Only if the boss approves. <laughs> boss, are you listening? Please approve this man. He's into AI. Let him get one of these boxes, please. Yeah, she's probably gonna say no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this thing will uh, fit in my car. We're gonna have to find out, but... Uh, <laughs> actually, let's find out how big this is next to some other mini PCs. Yeah, yeah. What do we got here? Oh, we have a little Acer mini PC. Hey, look at that. I don't think I've ever tested that one. What is that? The Veriton Vero. I, I gotta be honest, I've never even heard of that. But you know what? That one gives us a stand. That one gives a stand. This one doesn't come with a stand. Yeah. Well, we have a Mac Studio out, and that's a good uh, comparison. Next to the Mac Studio, we got a little Mac Mini over here. Oh, this Mac Mini is smaller. We've got the Mini Forum Mini PC, which is small. Very, very small. That is a tiny one. Here's another Mini Forum. So why am I comparing it to all these Mini PCs? It's silly, right, the size? But uh, I want to compare them to other mini PCs that have 128 gigs of memory available, just like this one. This one has 128 gigs all shareable with the GPU. Unified memory, they call it, right? Just kind of like Apple does. And I want to see how they perform against this box, the other machines. I don't think this fits in my pocket, but I'll hold it. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Always good to have you in here, till, Alex. Till next time. Till next time. Next time we'll be building something. I'm sure I'll see more of you guys coming in here. Uh saying hi too, so I'll see y'all then too. All right, so this is just me kicking the tires. I've only had a couple hours with this thing, but I'll be back with more tests and deep dives. Tell me what you wanna see in the comments. I am reading them and subscribe if you wanna catch the next videos. Until now, all we've had available to us are general purpose mini PCs, even capable of 128 gigs of memory. The most impressive iGPU we've seen so far this year has been from AMD and that's the Strix Halo machine. Here's a B-Link GTR 9 that has that in there. GMK Tech Evo X2. And of course the framework desktop, uh, don't mind mine. Mine is just a special case that I put the board in. But yeah, you can do that. They all have the same chip. Even the Apple Silicon machines, the Mac Mini, the Mac Studio, they have unified memory and can share that with the GPU for parallel processing, which is what we'd need for machine learning. But like I said at the beginning of this video, this one is a little bit different. It changes the paradigm. See these are general purpose computers. They can do lots of different things. And some of them are really good, even premium premium, but they're all still general purpose. The Spark is different in that it's really, really good at one thing, being pliers. Just kidding. I saw these on Project Farm, so I bought them. I, they are pretty good. These are the best pliers out of all those pliers. And the DJX Spark, in my opinion, is the best way to get into AI development on the most popular stack in the world for AI. To me, there are three groups of people that are eyeballing this thing and wondering if they should fork over the $4,000. First group is developers, my people. Is this a good general purpose dev box? .NET, Python, JavaScript, those kind of people. Yeah, I know you're gonna leave a bunch of comments saying what kind of developer you are. Go ahead, let everybody know it's good. Get that out, Rust, Go, whatever you have. Those are all gonna be CPU bound tasks. And this thing has 20 cores. That's a lot of cores. That's how many cores the first M1 Ultra had from Apple Silicon. M4, M4 Pro, M4 Max still don't have 20 cores even to this day. None of the Intel or AMD chips that I've tested here have 20 cores. What does 20 cores translate to? Well, you're gonna be able to build and run code a lot faster. Here is a Mandelbrot test. This is a Python interpreted test that I usually run as a test on the channel, just to kind of see where we are. Here we got the DGX Spark, the framework desktop, and down here is the Mac Mini. I use this test because it uses all the available cores and it just pegs them to the max. What do we got? M4 Pro, 16 and a half seconds for that task, 16.24 seconds on the Strix Halo box, and 15.3 seconds on the DJX Spark. I thought it was gonna do a little bit better, but it's still better than the other ones. But this is to say that, yes, developers surely can use this box as their development machine if they want to. But if that's all you're gonna be doing, then don't buy this box. This is a $4,000 mini PC. I shouldn't have to tell you that. There's plenty of other options that are general purpose machines 
that you're going to be better off with. The second group of people, these are the people that like to tinker with LLMs. They like to run their LLM studio and Olama and chat with it and run agents maybe inside VS Code. I'll call these people the end users. Could be developers, could be something else. Now, LLM Studio and Olama both use Llama CPP, a very popular project. And Llama CPP comes with a bunch of tools that we can run, including Llama Bench. So here's Llama Bench on these three machines with Quencoder 30 billion at Q4 quantization. This is the GGUF model, not even FP4. And what does this tell us? Well, let's run it first. But Llama Bench basically tells us two things, how fast the prompt processing is and how fast the token generation is. And here we go. We know it's going to the GPU of whatever system we're using because of the GPU graph right here on all three systems. By the way, I picked all three of these because they're the quietest. So they're not making all this noise in my office. <laughs> Framework Desktop, Mac Mini, and the DJX Spark. DJX Spark is very quiet machine for what it can do. Check out these numbers, PP512 on the Mac Mini. I like to think of it as prompt processing, but it's, it stands for prefill. And this is the M4 Pro chip, by the way. We've got 563 tokens per second. This is the weakness of the Apple system. It's fast as token generation because it has good memory bandwidth, especially when you scale up to the M4 Max or the M3 Ultra, those have really nice memory bandwidths that go a lot faster for token generation. But M4 Pro is not quite up there. So we've got 55 tokens per second for token generation. Much better tokens per second on the framework desktop with that Strix Halo chip. We're up to 73 here, but our PP is only 342 here, so quite low. But if we take a look at the DJX Spark, 2,107 for PP512. This is where that machine really shines is that prompt processing speed, which is something you don't notice when you're running a chat bot. Well, you might notice it uh, if it takes a long time for you to get your result, but most of the time it's just streaming results, so you don't really notice it anyway. But you will notice the difference in code editors, especially with fill in the middle models. I talked about these on the channel before. It's uh, when you're using code completion, especially, or when you're using inline editing. That's a huge difference, four times faster than the M4 Pro and like six and a half times faster than the Strix Halo machine. It's also faster at token generation here at 83 tokens per second. Now we've seen some numbers out there. Generally, this machine having a lower bandwidth than let's say the M4 Max will have a slower token generation as well. In the first case that I ran, the M4 Max did about twice the speed at token generation for that particular model. What does that tell us about the difference between the Spark and the other machines? Well, we knew it was gonna be memory bandwidth bound because these numbers have been out for months now, but we didn't know that it was gonna be so fast at prefill. And we kind of guessed that it was gonna be really good at computation because of the CUDA cores. So anything that's gonna be CUDA compatible is gonna run like crazy on this thing. Speaking of which, a workflow that's gonna be very computation heavy and not so much token generation heavy is stable diffusion. So here I've got Comfy UI pulled up. I already ran it. This is the uh, default template, whatever it comes with, the most basic thing. Let's run that again on all these machines. Boom. And one more. Boom. And you can see that's happening right on the GPU on all three of these. I don't have them synchronized, my apologies, but it does print out the result as a number. And I ran these a few times. Generally, the Mac Mini does these in about 9.1 seconds. The prompt executed 9.1 seconds. We're getting 2.38 iterations per second, and that's pretty consistent here. The Strix Halo machine is down to about 6.8 seconds for this process going about 3.5 iterations per second djx spark so just under four seconds to do this thing and we are over six iterations per second computationally this thing is a little beast cpu wise and gpu wise so for a second group of people yeah there's tinkerers there's people that like to run these things and generate text, generate images. But if you don't want the fastest thing out there, you can grab a couple of these other machines that are gonna be significantly cheaper, like the Framework desktop. Some of these other machines, the $2,000 boxes are actually cheaper than the Spark. But if you're considering really investing in the skills and moving on to being in the third group, then you still might consider the Spark. And the third group of people, I think, is the main audience for the Spark. Here's an example of a third type of person. This is Sebastian Roshka. There's a lot of AI related work and teaching. I saw the DJX Spark versus Mac Mini 4 Pro benchmark plot making the rounds. He likes the Mac Mini, 
probably the best desktop he's owned for local inference and open weight LLMs. It works great. That said, I would not fine tune even a small LLM on it since it gets very hot. The Spark probably targets that type of sustained workload. I gotta tell you, Sebastian, the Spark gets pretty hot, but based on what I've seen and I've ran some sustained tests on it, it stays pretty consistent and I haven't gotten it to throttle just yet, but more testing to be done. Also, as of right now, the Mac Mini M4 Pro goes up to 64 gigs of memory, so you'll be limited to that, whereas on the Spark, it goes up to 128. A pretty insightful post from Abnormal Human on Reddit here. If you want to replicate the GB200 environment as closely as possible, that's NVIDIA's data center environment, you need three things. NVIDIA Grace ARM CPU, which this has, InfiniBand, which this has, and CUDA support. RTX Pro 6000 Blackwell only provides one of those three, but two DGX Sparks, you've nailed all three requirements under $10,000. I want to bring your attention to the back of this thing one more time because you'll notice we have the regular 10 gig ethernet here, but we also have these two two ports. Show me another computer that has those and tell me why you'd need that. Well, you'd need that because you're plugging it into something that's going to be really freaking fast. A network that's designed to go 200 gigabit, connect multiple of these together, which I'm going to do pretty soon because this is my number two. There you go, little guy. That's the kind of networking you get in data centers. So this thing is a serious pro box not a toy. I always tell my kids, it's not a toy. Don't forget, it's got native FP4 support. FP4 is the quantization level that's as small as int4, in other words, four times smaller than regular size, so it can run on smaller devices, but also it's floating point, so it maintains some of the high quality output. Those are very broad brush strokes, but if you want to know more, check out Julia Turk's channel. She goes into a deep dive on FP4. I've done a few FP4 runs on this thing, but I've not compared the quality of the output. That's kind of subjective and hard to do but FP4 runs like butter on this thing. One other thing, the operating system and software support. I'm thinking now that another reason why this thing might have taken so long to come out is because on day one, they had an enormous ecosystem of software support, third-party vendors that have integrated their software to work with this really well. They have a new OS for this thing. It's based on Ubuntu. But when you take this out of the box, everything that you need is installed and ready to go. There's no complicated development environment setups. There's no driver installations. LM Studio, Olama have day one support on this thing. Comfy UI as well. I don't think it's ever been easier to just set up a dev box with AI workflows and get going with it. Catching everybody up might have taken a little bit of extra time, but I'm glad they did it. Now Strix Halo, really good platform. They put out the chip. They said, here you go. The chip is here. They gave it to people but software is still catching up, which makes the whole thing less approachable. It works, but it works for that second group of people, not necessarily the third group of people. Are people gonna buy this thing? I think they will. I think they'll buy a ton of these things. And I think Jensen tested this thing out, actually. Remember last year in 2024, before the announcement of the Spark or Project Digits, he announced this thing. Well, it's in a pretty little case by Roboco. This is the Jetson Oren Nano Super. It was 249 bucks, but guess what? It just sold out and then it was on eBay for 300 or more. Kind of like a proof of concept of, do people want dedicated little mini PCs for AI purposes? And I think they do. So basically here's what I think what NVIDIA is doing here. They're providing a pro level personal mini dev machine with pro level features, features that actually represent and mimic the technology that's being used in production applications for machine learning. They're the first and only company right now to make something like this. In a way, it's making something really expensive and unapproachable like data center technology that's being used in production somewhat approachable to your professionals, but also now they're scooping up those enthusiasts. They're giving them and their apps direct path from their desk to the data center. Of course, on the NVIDIA stack. I personally think it's fantastic. And Apple is paying attention, even though Apple has a general purpose device, they're paying attention and they wanna get some of that too. Maybe other vendors will also catch up like AMD and create their own tiny little AMD box. I kind of like where this is going. It's making things a lot easier to set up. So keep an eye out for more videos with these things, multiple ones stacked together. And thanks to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. Thanks to Daniel too, for helping me out and being awesome and having great hair. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.